funny thing about these artist interviews is at some point, you know, I had to let go of the idea that I was going to tell this really coherent story about myself from beginning to end. And the more that uh, I've watched other artist interviews, I realize that none of them are really like a linear storyline. It's all bits and pieces that you pick up about the artist, which is probably, you know, the best way to do it. I listen to a lot of artist podcasts too, and there's a lot of times when I'm just like, this drank too much coffee before his interview. <laughs> this guy should have drank some coffee or something. <laughs> I don't know, if you get hit somewhere right in the middle, it'll it's... be all right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>
a bad thing because I was a little boy, you know, and this is the culture that I'm being fed every day. So it's fun to use those characters the way that I want to tell a story since they have always taken the liberty with cultures to tell their stories however they want. For me, that, that feels like reappropriating imagery to uh, do what I wanted to do. This one's probably done. Sign it and put it on Etsy. Don't remember feeling Ojibwe a lot. It wasn't until student life when I went to school that I actually started to really dig deep into uh, books about Ojibwe stories, culture, language. When I find a really good story, you know, like I like to harness that spirit and um, put it into some of my work. This is a scene where the character uh, gives birth to himself and then passes away. So these are floating heads that are all animated. Yeah, how it turns out is pretty sweet because you can add all of these effects at the same time. After I got out of school, a lot of my friends went out to California to be Hollywood visual effects artists. And I'm glad I didn't go. I just started working with poets, uh, theaters, documentary filmmakers, local Ojibwe language teachers, and I would get hired to design these animation sequences for their film. I've designed animation for important movements like the murdered and missing indigenous women, which seeks to tell the stories of women who are no longer with their families due to uh, violence. That kind of content for me is important because I've been affected by that in my own life. I've had multiple people in my life that were uh, murdered and their murders were never investigated fully. You know, it was just kind of botched investigation, which is something that you find a lot of the times with these stories is that evidence was mishandled. Um, there was no real uh, effort given to it or the case just went cold. It's frustrating to see that. And I guess there's nothing that I can do about what happened with them, but what I can do is try to use my art to uh, help tell the stories of some people. The manifesto installation at the Minneapolis airport is a compilation of three stories that I've adapted from Ojibwe storytelling. And I think one of the great things about the location of that exhibit is that people who are coming from all over the planet can be exposed to a little glimpse of Ojibwe language and Ojibwe storytelling. And I think that helps with visibility of a culture, of a community, you know, that lives here. There are seven Ojibwe nations in northern Minnesota, and a lot of people don't know that. So uh, people coming from around the world, you know, can be introduced to that here. I've been a lot of places in the world. I would live in Minnesota for the rest of my life if, uh, you know, that's the way it turns out. I feel like uh, Lake Superior, you could say that it has a spiritual energy to it. You know, it inspires me, it keeps me humble uh, or right-sized. And I think it comes from uh, maybe always being next to something that's wild. You know, something that's you can't tame it. Something that could take you if it wanted to. And that feels alive, you know, like that makes me feel like every day I'm just grateful to be alive and uh, make the most of it. A lot of times I'm just telling a story with my work. And sometimes that story is inspired by what's happening in the world. Sometimes it's inspired by what's happening in my life. Becoming a parent has changed everything about me. And I remember prior to being a parent, hearing people say stuff like, it's gonna change everything. And I was just like, no, I'm always gonna be who I am. I am who I am, you know? But yeah, it's changed everything for the better. I feel like the messages just have